On Sunday night, February 21st, the Timberwolves lost in another close game. This time they fell to the New York Knicks. There was a mere three-point difference between the two teams, and the last two players for Minnesota to attempt a field goal were not Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards, not even Malik Beasley. It was Ricky Rubio and Mac Daddy Jaden McDaniels. Shortly after the game, it was announced that the Minnesota Timberwolves had fired head coach Ryan Saunders. For Wolves diehard, this came as no surprise. The Wolves had suffered a series of heartbreaking close game losses over the last month. Most often, the thing called into question post game was the coaching. This Knicks game was absolutely exemplary of this. The only element of this that came as a surprise was that the Timberwolves announced that they had hired a new coach from another team on the same night. Chris Finch, a Raptors assistant coach, was signed to a multi-year contract. This is remarkably strange. Poaching another coach mid-season is not something I can recall happening in recent NBA history, but even stranger is how premeditated this seems. Canning Saunders was certainly something that had been on the table for some time, and the Wolves had clearly been underperforming, so relieving Saunders of his duties is absolutely not abnormal. But to can him and then announce a multi-year deal had been struck with a coach from another team is just so strange. None of this really matters, but the move comes off to me as particularly callous. Ryan Saunders had a very long history with the Wolves. He's been coaching with the Wolves since 2014, but he's been a part of the organization for a long time, dating back essentially to his time as a ball boy for the Kevin Garnett Timberwolves when his dad was the head coach. I don't want to dwell on this for too long. The firing of Ryan Saunders was not a surprise. I'm not I'm not advocating that he should have continued to be our head coach, but to can him and announce his replacement had been signed to what was clearly already a deal that had been lined up in the same night. I don't know, it just doesn't totally sit with me well, but that's totally beside the point. Now, before we crack open Chris Finch, let's talk about another factor that makes this so strange. The Timberwolves associate head coach, David Vanterpool, was completely passed over here. The Wolves don't have a ton left to play for this season, and when it became clear that Saunders' time with the team was numbered, many Wolves fans had speculated that Vanderpool would take the reins and we get half a season to see how he did before we assessed in the offseason who we wanted calling the shots going forward. Vanterpool was an assistant in Portland from 2012 to 2019, and Damian Lillard spoke out about Vanderpool not getting a look, saying, quote, How the hell do you not hire David Vanterpool? He's right there on the bench, and he has been in front office successfully and on the front of a bench of a winning team successfully for seven years, and also has played a major role in the development of a dominant backcourt shaking my damn head and dame of course makes some solid points vanterpool was a coach in the development of damian lillard and siege mccollum and both of those guys clearly really worked out for portland if vanderpool was able to have a similar effect on d and ant edwards it sure would change the outlook of things in minnesota It'll be interesting to see if Vanderpool sticks it out with Minnesota after, I think, what is fair to consider a total snub. But either way, I think he'll end up taking the reins of an NBA team in the near future. But for reasons beyond my knowledge, it's not with the Timberwolves. So now let's talk Chris Finch. After a playing career in the British Basketball League, Finch became a head coach in several international leagues, over the course of a decade before making his way to the Rio Grande Valley Vipers of the G League. He then spent five years with the Rockets, at which point he had some overlap with Gerson Rosas, who was also in the Rockets organization at the time. He then had a year with the Nuggets, three years with the Pelicans, and then signed with the Raptors during this last offseason. 
In an article on The Athletic written by John Krasinski, Blake Murphy, who is a Raptors beat writer, reports that Finch has a long track record of improving offenses, specifically star-oriented ones like the Harden Rockets and the Zion Pelicans. This is certainly an encouraging sentiment as finding a way to better construct our offense around the transcendently talented Carl Anthony Towns is absolutely at the top of our priority list as we currently stand as the league's 28th ranked offense. Granted, a lot of that is without Carl in the lineup. A significant amount of it is. John Meyer, who's another Timberwolves must follow on Twitter, dug up a 2019 tweet about an interview that Finch had had with the Wolves, so it has certainly been a long time coming. So looking forward, time will tell how this sudden change pans out for the Timberwolves. One would hope that Cat wasn't really taken by surprise with the move. There is no way around it that a move like this can be upsetting for a star player, especially one who likes their head coach. But Towns' will to succeed and his desire to win has been a constant in his post-game interviews. He is sick of losing, and he's made that point very, very clear through the media. Wolves fans should be encouraged by a post-game quote from Carl Anthony Towns saying, quote, If you want to build a legacy, we gotta win. I want to build my legacy here. I want to win with the Wolves, and I'm going to do everything I possibly can to step by step, brick by brick, build something. This is an encouraging sign in a league filled with more player movement than ever. It's not hard to imagine a scenario where Carl moves on. This quote, of course, came before the firing of Ryan Saunders, so it'll be interesting to see how Carl responds to this coaching change. I remember just a few years ago, when the Milwaukee Bucks fired Jason Kidd and Giannis initially resisted the coaching change but went on to become a back-to-back -back MVP. Let's hope that this coaching change ends up having a similar type of effect on Towns and the Wolves in general. Stay lit and thanks for watching.